Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Weekly Market Brief. This is the technical section of the brief. If you've not read the brief, it's in the link below where I'm talking about some of the big structural uh, aspects that are leading me to believe we're kind of approaching the period of the reckoning, as I, as I call it. 2019, we've had so far obviously a massive rally. Thank you very much, U.S. Federal Reserve. Uh, but on Friday, we saw a sizable down day. Now, a down day does not make a bear market. And a initial yield curve inversion does not make a recession yet either. But these are all very concerning signs. And I wanted to walk you through some of the latest charts and follow up on some of the charts we discussed last week. So without further ado, let's go right through it. Uh, on the uh, big picture front, let me just highlight this point I've been repeatedly making. Yields, bonds specifically, are following the script they've been following for, for decades. And specifically here with uh, these large market trends that we've seen break down in the past. We've had that breakdown in December, and now we've had this massive rally up to this trend line again. And I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later. But this total collapse in, in yields is reflective of what we've seen before at the end of a big business cycle. As you can see, unemployment very low. and We've kind of seen the kind of the first inkling or maybe that's changing here, breaking out. We haven't seen any confirmation on, on that yet, uh, but it is a concern. And I think we all need to be highly watchful of this because this is, as I outlined last week, here's the industrials. We see markets following so far a very repetitive pat pattern. And this pattern says lower highs and after the breakdown, a big rally, which is exactly what we've seen. Now for the bear case to take fruit, we need to see a break of these big wedges that have formed uh, across multiple indices. And that remains at this point unconfirmed. Now, uh, this is the Wiltshire. This is the overall broadest stock index there is, and it's following the same pattern I've put on the banking sector here below as well. I've been tracking that for months. And this week, we've seen, or the last couple of weeks, actually, we've been seeing vast underperformance in banks, and on Friday, just got absolutely clobbered as obviously yields are dropping. And so in context of new highs on negative divergences, then a counter rally and this RSI turning Again, it fits in with, with the pattern. So nothing is confirmed, but again, the bull case has not been confirmed either. What the bull case has relied on in 2019 is the Fed, the Fed, and nothing but the Fed. But then something changed this week, right? We had yet another Fed meeting, and the Fed completely capitulated and basically assured that they're going to be dovish for the next two years at least, and the balance sheet is going to be no longer be rolled off, and they're going to stick around three and a half trillion to 3.8 trillion, and they're going to start expanding it again in 2021 at minimum. So how did the market react? Well, first, badly, it kind of sold off, then it pushed up against towards new highs on, on NASDAQ in particular, and then it all fell apart on Friday when the yield curve inverted. This is not exactly what the Fed had probably planned. The big concern here is that, you know, they've, they've, you know, reversed the policy here, then they confirmed it, and then they really confirmed it here uh, this week, and they basically removed the carrot, right? Because carrot, 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 and now it's all priced in. Now everybody knows the Fed's ending the roll-off. It's not going to raise rates, and so that's completely priced into the market. They cannot now you know, surprise markets with more dovishness. The only thing they can do now is cut rates at some point in the futures and introduce QE, QE4. So that carrot is gone. So, you know, you're going to see a lot more Fed speakers in the next few weeks and they're going to be dovish, blah, 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 blah. But the market has already priced that in. So then, you know, the, there are still upside catalysts, don't get me wrong, right? China deal can come still through. There may be a miraculous recovery with, with Brexit. Uh, so there's still upside possibilities. But as far as the Fed's concerned, that carrot is gone. And look what they've done with all this. I pointed this out on March 21st, this recovery in the NASDAQ, because the NASDAQ has drive, been driving everything here, absolutely obscene. 
almost 30% recovery in a straight line from the December lows. And what they've done here is absolutely stunning. It is the highest MACD upside deviation since 1999. Actually passed it uh, on the 21st. And it was just basically saying, this is, this is you know, you, you're really pushing your lug here uh, if you continue to, to want to buy NASDAQ stocks, here specifically the FANGs and all that. It's just, it's just poor risk reward. So this has been a shocker, really, to see this kind of move and obviously reflective of how extreme this rally has been. And, you know, on Friday then came the Piper, right? We saw a big reversal, uh, not only in the NASDAQ, but oh my God, look at small caps uh, down 3.6%. And small caps has been, have been kind of weak for pretty much most of the month here. And of course, we saw this first VIX spike here as, as well. Now, what's the fuzz? The fuzz is the yield curve. This is the 10-year visa, the three-month everybody's talking about. It inverted, and it has some implications because the track record is very strong on, on that particular indicator. Um, obviously, these inversions can last before a recession takes hold, and I'll talk about this in a, in a minute or more, but notice when, when this, this turns and this tightens, then a recession comes very quickly. Now, the, the time frames of these things, they can vary greatly. And there's not going to be an easy answer here whatsoever. But as an indicator, just recognize that uh, it's, it's very solid as an indicator. So if, you, if you're betting on this being a false one, like here, for example, um, there's not much history to go by that says it's not a false indicator, but rather a recession is coming. This is obviously the point I've been making as well. Now, in terms of the, the timing of all this, this varies greatly. It could be within six months. It could be two years from now. And what bulls will argue is that, you know, if it's two years from now, then equities still have a lot of room to run. And that may very well be the case. So one has to be very much open-minded about it. Again, reference China and maybe Brexit or what have you. And so the recession could be delayed. And at that point, it becomes kind of the game of musical chairs, get everybody sucked into this final hoorah rally before everything, before the rug gets pulled, if you, if you will. What are some of the indications that we may see a recession actually sooner? Well, one of the concerns I've been raising is this massive debt flow that's taking place, courtesy of the US government following the tax cuts. We, we've been having, obviously, these massive deficits that are unfolding, trillion-dollar deficits before recession. All that is highly concerning to me, to be perfectly honest with you. And if I look at a different form of the yield curve, here's the 30-year visa, the five-year. You know, that, that thing has already been tightening. And again, in context of, um, you know, the, the, the end of cycle period, this leaves room to say that a recession may actually come a lot sooner. So, you know, these yield cur curves are important to watch in the next few weeks and months, obviously, uh, but they don't give us yet any specific timing uh, whatsoever. I just point out that, you know, in 2000, 2001, a recession came actually very quickly. In fact, markets had topped before the yield curve inversion and the Fed stopping and as you recall, it was March 24th that NASDAQ peaked. Kind of interesting time reference here because perhaps NASDAQ just peaked this week around the 21st, 22nd. So the, the timing may be coincidental. But we, we shall find out. What has happened with Friday's close, however, is that we saw these weekly rejection candles. And uh, that may be worth watching as well because obviously we've had this incredible run that remains entirely uncorrected. So what I want to walk you through now are just some follow-ups to some charts that we discussed in last week's video. Uh, this is the chart of the ES and last week I said on this next run, knowing that there was a Fed meeting, I said that I would be very surprised if markets can push past this zone. So I had outlined this as the risk zone. We did enter the risk zone and then we rejected it. So actually that, that risk zone worked really well for for reversal play uh, on 
March 14th, I put out this article about the VIX launch, coming VIX launch. The point was here about this, this larger pattern, this, this wedge, if you will, that ultimately points to a major VIX spike to come, especially given here this positive divergence. And sure enough, look, look what happened this week, right? We had a couple of spikes below. You always get these you know, fake outs, if you will, say, hey, what's, with, what's going on with my pattern here? Uh, but it's interesting, you, know, they, you have these intraday spikes, but then they close it at the trend line anyway. Uh, and then, of course, boom, we had this move. And actually, on a Friday, it went even higher uh, for a bit before then coming back down. But again, this, to me, uh, validates this pattern again. So, yeah, we, we, can, we can still chug around on this pattern. You know, we can still go into the 12s again. But once this breaks out, you know, you can break out, you can have a retest, what have you. But this pattern suggests there is volatility to come for sure. Now, going to the next chart. Uh, this was the Dow I had pointed out last week as well. Uh, obviously, we've had this massive tight wedge, and we had a, a breakdown just before OPEX, and we built another smaller wedge, and that wedge also broke down. And this is in context of the VIX. Remember, we had this you know breakout initially pre OPEX. Then we had this renewed consolidation right on top of the trend line. I mean, it's, it's I love how these technicals work. I mean, it's 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 pretty nifty, right? There's this classy breakout, retest, and then pow, back higher. So basically, this pattern here on the VIX, with the breakdown of these wedges, must be concerning, or they're at least indicative that there may be a larger pullback still in the cards here. Uh, Russell, the same picture. This was last week. We had pointed out that it repeatedly failed at the 200 MA. Then we had this dump before OPEX, rising wedge, and then that wedge broke out in the same picture here on, on the volatility index. Now, transports. There's another one of these indices that we've been following. It was very weak. Uh, had this really bad run into pre-OPEX, built a bear flag, if you will, and then broke down the bear flag. Notice the big wedge pattern on the SVX, and I'll get back to that as well in a few minutes. Big picture, these are several key indices I've been tracking, and I've been pointing out this weakness in banks, been pointing out the weakness in transports, been pointing out the weakness in the small caps. They are all very much deviated to the downside, and it was all tech, 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 tech up until Friday. And that's when we had the breakdown here. But look what happened here with the banks. Sorry, this is this is not bullish. These type of big divergences do not speak of a broad bull market rally. This this speaks to a weakening bull market, a diverging bull market uh, rally. And this action obviously is pretty sizable here. I think they were down almost ten percent in, in in a few days, down eight and a half percent in the month of March. Small caps are down almost five percent transports down 4%. So there's a lot of weakness underneath and it's been masked by the almighty NASDAQ. I've been talking about divergences. This, this spike up on, on Thursday definitely challenged conviction on this negative divergence because it almost made it non-negative. But then we got the pullback. But keep in mind what I've been saying last week, you know, this last rally here you know, where's the strength? There was no strength here, and now we have this weaker MACD, and it's crossing over as well. Again, suggesting more downside possible, and obviously this big support here uh, on the 200 MA and the 50 MA um, that are converging here should we get a full, further pullback on that front. But let's look at the bigger picture. We have this massive rising wedge. Now, this thing almost broke, but it didn't break. So nothing's broken at this point. And so, you know, you can, this can bounce back up and we can move up higher, what have you. But these wedges, when they break, pack a punch. And notice that on Friday, we actually closed below the February highs, the November highs, the you know, December highs, November and October highs. So this, this whole breakout that was initially celebrated, you know, for now it looks like it was a, fake breakout. BPSBX talked about this last week, this pattern. 
it's amazing how well it continues to perform vis-a-vis -vis what it did in 2015. This was the big bounce up. We had the big bounce up. We had this 87, 89 RSI reading vastly overbought. Then we had, you see it, I mean, it's, it's almost a like-for-like -like play here. Then we had this counter rally that produced new highs. And this was in context of breaking above the 200 MA, dropping below, going back above it. This is exactly what we've been doing. We have not broken below it yet, but based on this pattern structure, what this suggests, if we see a replay, this could go all the way back down. And in 2016, of course, it produced new lows. Seems not fathomable at this point, but it didn't back then either. So again, you know, this is a pattern to watch. It can, of course, disconnect at any time, but I'm just pointing out that for now, it is actually showing signs of replaying what it did in the 2015-2016 timeframe. Let's go to the NASDAQ. As, you, as I mentioned before, this massive historical MACD deviation. Uh, it, like SBX, has a massive rising wedge. It's not broken. We had this nice little throw over to fake everyone out uh, on Thursday. For, and then you know, now we have this breakdown. Again, you know, you got to look at some of these uh, structures. Here's the RSI on the two-hour basis, and just when this thing gets overbought, it's just not a good time to 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 keep pushing on the long side. Rather, it's 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 a signal to start thinking about selling, and that's exactly what it did here. Again, big spike up. You know, you have a trend line, even though it challenges you. It is it's still in context of this. It's telling you that something's going to happen. And it didn't. So I continue to be impressed by how well the technicals are working. And of course, in the lead up to all this, I've been pointing out all these negative divergences on NASDAQ. Here's the new highs, new lows. It just, it just didn't confirm anything uh, in terms of the, the strength because a lot of the strength was simply concentrated in, again, the big fangs. This was the cumulative uh, advanced decline index on, on the NASDAQ and that divergence finally mattered and then mattered on Friday. So where does this put us? Well, as long as this um, trend line holds, then I think, you know, we, we can see still further rallies. Should it break? You know, it technically this rally has been so large and, and so un, uncorrected, you know, you, you you can imagine all kinds of scenarios and how this could unfold, but technically it has a lot of room to go uh, if something were to seriously break down. A lot of that is, of course, dependent on what happens now with the buybacks coming out, with earnings coming in, any developments on China, Brexit, uh, what have you. But on a, on a serious break, this has a lot of room to go. Now, of course, you know, whether this then ultimately resolves bullishly still Again, depending on some of the factors I mentioned, um, you can point to maybe a potential inverse uh, building at some point. Too early to tell. We need to keep an open mind. But in context of expecting sizable volatility, um, I, I think we're going to see a lot more opportunity in this year. Um, keep in mind, we still remain in the 2018 trading range, so nothing's changed on, on that front. The big picture here, if, if you do want to say um, a bearish resolution, you do need want to see new lows at some point uh, to, to come. We've got this interesting pattern here, as I've been pointing out, this 2009 trend line has continued to be resistance over the last few weeks, and we got another rejection on Friday. So now we have potentially here a channel forming. I say potentially, none of this is confirmed. Um, I remain completely open here. I'm just trying to be practical and navigating through through all this. And the uh, fact is, we have significant divergences. We have underperformance of key sectors, and we have concentration again in, in tech. And all of this central bank jawboning and policy reversal has not managed to get back above this trend line. So you know, obviously, I, you know, once we get above there, if we do then this leaves all kinds of room to retest the highs or even make new highs along this trend line. This, by the way, could go to 3,100. If you, know, you do get a bullish China deal and 
the recession as a result, delays for a year or two. All of that is possible. What is not accounted for is if a recession comes a lot sooner, maybe a China deal will not be all that is it is advertised to be. Um, and keep in mind the macro, and as I outlined in the in the article, the macro data keeps pointing down. So if this is a 2000, 2001 type scenario, then the way this would unfold is actually a fairly sizable correction, maybe a retest or even new lows. And keep in mind, just in the big picture of things, this big rally from 2009 has still not properly corrected. Just the basic FIP retrace would bring us back to 2072 here. So this is back to the 2015 highs in, in this time frame, 2000, beginning of 2016. In, in a big structural way, something like this would not, not be unusual. In fact, you know, there will be people that say if we do go into a recession, um, then things could get a lot ugly in the years to come. But this is all future music. It's still a day-to-day -day event here. And we'll have to see how the, the data unfolds in, in, in the weeks ahead. So my, my view here is that uh, we've got some short-term oversold readings. Um, there are obviously the concerns with buybacks coming out, reducing liquidity, and then Q1 earnings. So there's potential for a lot more volatility in the next weeks into to April. So I hope you found this helpful, and I'll catch you next time. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.